Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we're going to be doing my February wrap up. Let's get going. So first things first, I don't know if you noticed, but I cut my hair. So she's short, she's nice, she's healthy. <laughs> but I actually did it in a vlog that's... I actually got it done in a vlog and it's kind of come after this one. So you guys are going to get the first sneak peek anyways. So. Yeah, and this is my new hair. I like it so much. <laughs> but anyways, let's get going for my wrap up. So my first book was A Drop of Venom by Sanjini Patil. And this is where Cersei goes YA in this feminist retelling of the Medusa myth steeped in Indian mythology. So I gave this a 3 stars. It was an okay book. I think Vanisha seems to be a, a strong character. Despite the fact that kind of, she kind of started off weak, but I think her growth was really nicely done. I like how she was able to overcome challenges and how she proved herself that she can do it and she has determination and courage. And so Platyush was also a strong character and, and quite an interesting one, but I think I actually liked him better than Manisha. I don't think the romance was necessary since I thought it was a little bit too quick. I like there was just this one scene where like I I don't know what the timeline of the romance is, but like it was really love at first sight like, kind of thing, and they just wouldn't get married just like that. Um, but a lot goes on in that marriage. I'm not gonna spoil, so I don't know how to feel about the romance. But um, regardless, I did like how the romance, like, I did like how they supported each other, so I thought that was really nice. Um, the issue, like, the reason of that I gave three stars was, like, the issue of the story is that, like, I know what the author was trying to do, but, like, it was just so violent and so much the odd word. I don't know if I can say it, because YouTube hates those words, but... And it really has just too much violence in that odd one, so I just felt like really made the book go downhill. And like honestly, it didn't really have a good balance with the story as well. But the writing style wasn't great, but I think sometimes it threw off the book just a little bit because there was supposed to, like it was supposed to be a high fantasy, but it wasn't really since like, it would also have descriptive clauses and an atmosphere of ancient culture. The, like, I like the way how the characters were just too modern. And so, like, it wasn't really, it didn't really match the vibe of the book itself because the characters were just too modern and they talked too modern. So, it kind of threw off the book. Um, and like I didn't, I also didn't think the type of t dialogue what, uh, was good for this kind of story. And on um, sometimes the pacing could be off as well. But I don't think it was a bad story. It just didn't have balance between violence and non-violent stuff. So it could have been better. I do see potential, but. I just wish it was balanced out more. So my next book was Let Him Burn by Camila Cole. And this is like whip smart and immersive. This Jamaican inspired fantasy follows a god blessed heroine who is forced to choose between saving her sister or protecting her homeland. I gave this a 3.5 stars. I don't think it was bad. Like it was kind of good in its own way. I did like the relationship between Thadon and Alawa. I thought the sisterly relationship was really nicely done and like how they were both determined to find each other in like a hot warming way and gut wrenching so I really liked that a lot. I liked how the twist happened towards the end of Thadon and Ilana expecting to actually betray each other for the greater good. I am not spoiling it happens in the book. I'm not spoiling anything. Um, and like the queer representation was really like the best thing ever so it was I thought the author did a pretty good job of it so um, but also I feel like the characters will argue quite a lot at least that's how I feel like we're constantly seeing them arguing every few pages or so so I'm like oh that's not good 
Um, but also, um, I really think the wall should be fleshed out more and more of wall since the plot has wall itself. So, but it feels like we didn't know much about the wall until a little like towards the end of the book. So, I don't know. And it just felt really random. So, but I did like the dragon lore. I thought that was really cool. And like the rep representation of it. But I really wanted more. Like the whole thing could have been fleshed out really, really better. So, like it really did have potential. It would just sounded so cool and unique. So, I just really wish like it was just more fleshed out. Like I just wanted more of the dragon lore. Just because it sounded so cool. But... Yeah, so I, it was okay. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to read a sequel. I might, I might not. I don't know. But it wasn't a bad book, to be honest. So, yeah. And my next book, it was actually for the novella challenge that I had done. It's Mysteries of Thorn Madam by Margaret Rogerson. So, in this novella, Two Sorcery of Thorns, we follow Elizabeth, Nathaniel, and Silas, who must unravel the magical rat trap and keeping them inside Thorn Manor in time for the midwinter ball. So obviously I give it a 5 stars just because it was really really cute. So I know I haven't given a book 5 stars in a long time ever since Babel I think it was but I'm actually not counting novellas as like an actual book. So technically I still have not yet found a 5 star full length book. So I'm yeah I'm not gonna count novellas but it was still a fun read, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> like, yeah, it was really nice to go back to the wall, and then I liked from the first book, which was again, Sorcery of Thorns. I liked how the story had unfolded itself, and the mystery as to why the Thorn Manor was acting the way it was. Like, it was just going haywire, and there was like magic all over the place, so it was really quite chaotic, actually. I kind of feel bad for the maid because they have this new maid and they're like, so what's happening over here? I feel bad for her, but I think she survived most from the most part. She was just kind of a little bit cautious about Silas, so yeah, um, but I would say that she, su she survived. <laughs> um, yeah, but I like how Nathaniel was finding his way to show his love to Elizabeth and I really like Silas. He's actually my favorite character from the original book, so... I'm not surprised there. Like, I just love about everything about him. Like, he's so mysterious and really intriguing to read about. So I wish Margaret would write a book about Silas. I think it'd be such a cool book to write about Silas. So it'll be interesting to know, like, where he, where the original master started from and all that. So I think it'll be really a cool book. Margaret, Rod Margaret, if you're watching this. I hope you write a book about CLS, because that would be amazing. And yeah, I just really liked the ending, like when it kind of left an open end with CLS. I thought it was really appropriate for what it is, but um, it was such a fun read. I really enjoyed it. It was also a cute one, so yeah, like it was a really nice one. And my final book is Tales of the Celestial Kingdom by Su Lin Tan, and we have the illustrator who is Kelly Chong. So this is basically a, a novella to the Celestial Kingdom, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, and Heart of the Sun Warrior. Apparently there's a third book in this duology, even though it's not a duology anymore, so... I don't know how to feel about having a third book, because I feel like the second book was pretty much it. Like, I don't know what else the author could go from it, but we will see. So we have these new compilations of stories from before, during, and after, and the events of Daughter of the Moon Goddess and Heart of the Sun Warrior. So, and they were all perspectives from the characters that were from these books. So, um, yeah. So I actually gave this a 4.5 stars. Like, I really loved the illustrations and this book was so gorgeous. They were really so beautiful and so detailed. I love every detail of it. They were just so pretty. Like, I can't get enough of them. I mean, just, they're just so beautiful. 
Um, I love to re revisit the world from the original story. It was interesting to see from Shang Yi and Hu Yun's point of view. So, but I honestly wish we really got to see more of them. Maybe Sun Lin Tai should write like a prequel of Hu Yi and Shang Yi. I think it'll be really nice. So it'll be interesting to see. But um, yeah, so like I kind of like Shang Yi's story that really sounded kind of more interesting as well as Huey and I hope that they will have their own stories eventually as I said before. Um, I really like the so like I really like the epilogue from Dawn so it actually broke down into three sections. I believe there was Dawn, Dusk and Twilight I believe it was one of them. Yeah so there was like this Dusk, Twilight and Dawn. Those are the three sections the stories have been divided into. So yeah, I honestly think the Lilies was like the best part just because we got to see him with the complicated relationship with the Red Sea spirit. So I honestly thought it was needed and has been done what was needed. Um, yeah, but Zeng point of view was okay. Especially like the epilogue, if you're really a shepherd of Zeng Yin and Wen Zin, then I think that Jim did it justice if you're a fan of those two. But I personally like Li Wei, so I think Li Wei's story did a pretty good job of it. And my last book is Last by the Call by Chloe Gong. So we actually have two books. It's when the surrounding events of following fortune and following a f familiar cast of characters from the Bees Violence Delights. So as I said, there were two books. Um, so one of them is 4.5 stars. Like I really liked this foul murder a lot. So the, this foul murder is 4.5 for me. Um, well, like there was an actual plot and how Benedict and Marshall had to solve the crime that took place in the train. I always liked those kind of mysteries in the train. They're so fun to me. Um, with the foul, however, with the foul thing, this is where the four point five, the four stars is gonna come in. It was actually less of a plot and more of cute moments, which honestly nothing wrong. But like I feel like something. Like sometimes the cute moments were just placed awkwardly in the wrong time. Like there is a scene where Mama had to like Lily was chasing down a witness and then he suddenly stopped only to buy flowers for Juliet. So like that kind of scene didn't really make sense. I'm like, you're really chasing down a witness and you wanna buy flowers. Okay. I don't know, it just felt so awkward meeting them, like, oh okay. But um, yeah, and so honestly, this book didn't really have much to offer compared to this foul murder. But if you like cute, fluffy moments, then maybe you should read this foul murder. And maybe you should read a foul thing if you like cute moments. But I really like the first one, this foul murder, so yeah. So those are the books I have physically read in February. I actually have read audiobooks, but again, I think I said it in my last video, I am holding them off just because I am doing some kind of challenge with them. So I don't want to give out everything too much, but it will probably happen in the springtime. <laughs> it's taking so long. <laughs> or even in summer. I don't know, but I'm hoping I won't take it till summer because that's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> but anyways, let me know what you have read in February and please like, comment, and subscribe. So you'll be notified every time we post and I will see you in the next one. Bye!